Hey everyone, welcome to Freedom Friday with Pearls of Eden. Thank you for joining me for today and I have got a powerful word for you and I'm so excited to share and I pray that it breaks you free from any captivity of your mind and your heart and your spirit that you might be in this day. I pray that these words are edifying and encouraging. You all, I am listening to Howard here and I'm just going to give you a little praise break for just a moment because these are some songs that have definitely uh, been just in my heart today and so I want to share them with you all I don't know if y'all remember Howard Hewitt from back in the day but y'all just listen to sing your praise I sing it all day Sometimes you've just got to stir yourself up, encourage yourself in the Lord, and just give Him honor and praise and think about all that He's done for you. And it's songs like these, like these classic gospel songs that really hit home, you know? that I was listening to yesterday that I talked to y'all about. So let's see if y'all know this one. <laughs> Who can name this song? Let me turn it up some. I hope that y'all are having a beautiful Friday and this brings some joy into your day. Share with you 
with y'all for our praise break is this one. And I want to see if you're going to catch what it is. <laughs> correctly sounds of blackness I believe guys this was playing all over the airways and this was a gospel song right but it hit through the secular market it was so powerful right and I love this song how many y'all remember it <laughs> comment if you remember these songs they bring back so many memories I could just go on and on to the break of that but yeah those are three of the songs that I thought would bless your day all right so this powerful word that I have for you many of you know I guess since about last year I was talking about there being a showdown right between the prophets of Baal and the prophets of God and many of us are seeing things play out all over social media and it's like wow and it's only just beginning you all but I want to caution you I want to read something to you that the Lord always brings back to my spirit because I know that there is a man that is watching this that wonders, you know, whose side are you on? It seems as though you're you're sharing these powerful words and they hit home. Sometimes they benefit me and sometimes they cut like a sword because that is the word of God. And I'm not here to choose sides, but I am here to stand on the word of God. And normally I wouldn't even call out that I know that this particular man is watching. And I won't say your name, don't worry about it. But the Lord told me to do so, so that it will be confirmation that I know. <laughs> so take it for what you will. All right, Joshua, let's look at Joshua chapter five. And I'm gonna take you to verse 13. Now, when Joshua was, was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but a commander, as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? You know, so often people want to pull you one way. You've got to be on this team. You've got to be on team this. If you're not, you're my enemy. And I've come to tell you just as the angel of the Lord told Joshua, I'm on neither side, but I am on the side of the Lord. And I'm here to decree and declare the word of the Lord that he places in my spirit. And that can ruffle uh, people's feathers, especially in a day and age where they want you to be blue or red. They want it to be black or white. But I've come to tell you, I can only do what the Lord has called me to do. So that word was very specific. And I would urge you in this showdown where we're seeing so many divisions that you don't pick a side, but that you stand on the word of God. Because at the end of the day, that's whose side we must be on the word side. The word is what has to ring true in every situation, in every circumstance. And another word that the Lord gave me was about, Moses you know I have these questions that the Lord will put in my spirit to to inquire of right these questions don't just come out of nowhere but he'll place them in my spirit 
And one thing I noticed, you know, Moses, we know he did not go to the promised land, although he was a prophet of God, although he was a mighty leader, a mighty man of God, his frustration and his anger caused him to disobey the instructions of the Lord. Do you remember he was supposed to speak to the rock the second time, but instead he took his rod and he hit the rock in his frustration. Child of God, in your frustration, don't mess around and hit the rock when you're supposed to speak to it because these are God's people and nobody cares and it intercedes more than God does. He uses us as mighty vessels to, to help and guide and lead his people. But we have to remember that we don't get so angry and so frustrated with the sheep of God because they, hey, they can take you there. One moment they are loving you, one moment they're uh, cutting you. You're interceding, you're praying, you're fasting, and now you're enemy number one. I get how Moses got there, don't you? But we have to always remember and take the time to seek God's face because when we get caught up in our own frustrations, when God gives us an instruction, it's so easy for us just to get in our emotions. And before we know it, we are hitting the rock instead of speaking to it. So that word is very specific. And, you know, Moses missed the promised land. And another question that the Lord placed in my spirit, I don't even know if I even mentioned it, you all. But this was the question. Did Moses ever repent before God and before man? We are imperfect people, even as leaders put on these pedestals, even as leaders that are put in these high spiritual ranks. When we fall, there is still proper spiritual protocol. And I can't help but wonder if Moses would have repented before God and man for his actions, would he have gotten to go to the promised land? These are questions that I think about. Um, there's so many things, you all, that God will place in your spirit and you just inquire of him and he'll show you some mighty things. But here's the thing. Did Moses miss heaven? No. Moses was a righteous man, and the Bible says a righteous man can fall seven times. And I want you to understand before you cast somebody away because of their mistakes, you got to be very careful. You know, a lot of people don't like when I say, touch not my anointed and do my prophet harm, but it's for your protection. You see, all throughout the Bible, the archangel Michael refused to touch the anointed, which was Satan. He said, the Lord, may the Lord rebuke you. Why? Because he understood there is spiritual protocol. King David refused to touch the anointed of Saul. Did he fall off track? Yes. But are the gifts and the callings of God irrevocable? Yes. He could not bring break spiritual protocol because there is a cost and too many people out of ignorance don't understand it. even well many men and women of God are touching the anointed I tell you it's better to expose the arts of darkness than to go after men and women of God because you may feel as though they are um, not in God's graces I say always pray about it Pray about it. Take it to the prayer closet. These men and women need just as much prayer. And here's the thing. If you're teaching this word in season and out of season, you're going to teach people how not to walk into deception. You're going to teach people how to have a discernment. You're going to teach them to know a wolf from a sheep because you're leading them to Christ. The Holy Spirit that dwells in them is going to pull up those Holy Spirit alarms. And as you talk about these things, because... Listen, God has had me sound the alarm. All last week, I talked about prophets for profit, P-R-O-F-I-T. I talked about the Simon the Sorcerer, the spirit of Balaam. I talked about all of those things because they're in the word of God. And everything in the word of God is for our edification, for our growing. Did I have to call out anyone to do that? No. If you know the word of God, you'll see it clearly. Hallelujah. And again... Instead of dividing the body of Christ there, we need to be praying. We need to be praying for those who are in these particular leadership roles that if they have gone the way of error, if they have gone in the way of Balaam, that they come back to the right path. That takes intercession. That takes prayer. It's really easy to come on these cameras and expose everybody and be so quick to throw everybody away. You know, as believers, it's really a shame that, you know, the world has more grace sometimes than we do. We are so quick to throw away our own. 
And where is the mercy in that? The Bible says, whatever mercy you measure out, it shall be measured back to you. Do unto others as you want to be done to you. And I see so many people with this Pharisee spirit that they think that they have arrived and they're so righteous and they can call out every sin. But meanwhile, they need to sweep around their own front door. Be very careful. And I say this in love, that what you expose, make sure you don't have a plank in your own eye. Hallelujah. So let me just take a look at my notes because I don't want to miss anything. And I I don't always take notes. Rarely do I take notes, but I don't want to miss a thing. Okay. Talking about honor. God places on my spirit. You know, in America, especially in our culture in the West, honor is just not what it should be as it is in other nations. And when you see people honor and show such high reverence to different particular men and women of God, it really can ruffle some feathers because people say, well, why are you giving such great honor? He's just a man. Is that worship? No, there is a such thing as honor. We see the prophet Elijah and Elisha. Elijah would not leave Elijah's side. He served him everywhere he went. He was there learning and grasping everything he could from the prophet. And many people would look at that if they really truly are honest and say that was some form of worship, but it wasn't. He just highly reverenced. Another picture of a highly honor and reverence was Ruth and Naomi. Ruth refused to leave Naomi's side. She said, wherever you go, I will go. You know, there was a honor, even with Moses and Joshua. Joshua honored Moses in a way that many people might say is man worship or idolatry, but it wasn't. But there was a level of respect because of the calling on that person's life, right? That particular person's life. So, you know, we have to be very careful about that because I tell you, America, we have been so complacent in so many areas and compromised, dare I say. And honor is not one of our strongest points if you just look around in our society, right? So when we see such high honor, people, it really does, you know, um, rub people the wrong way. But I want to tell you, there's nothing wrong with honoring people, not worship, but honoring people in such a way that it glorifies God. Let everything you do glorify God. So I wanted to talk about that and we talked about what we're seeing a showdown between the prophets of Baal and the prophets of God and time will reveal all things but just remember this at the end of the day you're not choosing sides you are on the Lord's side thy kingdom come thy will be done as it is in heaven on earth. How many of you all are praying the Lord's Prayer? I did a video about that earlier this week, I think, the power of the Lord's Prayer. If you haven't checked that out, it's really good. I hope that you will go and watch it and learn and glean some things that will help you in your prayer life. And let's see, um, that is all that I have for you all. I love you all. Thanks so much for your support. Thank you for subscribing. All of the new subscribers, thank you all for being a part of the community and channel. And the thing that I pray for us all is that we're growing in the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding of our Lord and Savior, and that he will take us from glory to glory. And I pray a blessing upon you. I pray a blessing upon your family, your finances, your health, everything that you touch, that it may prosper for the glory of God. All right, guys, I love you. Y'all have a beautiful Friday and take care.